In this video, we're going to try to build a bigger picture of fisheries today to get an idea of the problems they face. Okay, previously we looked at the relationship between effort and economic rent. When the stock of fish is fished by one person, they try to maximize their own profit and actually end up utilizing the fish stock efficiently. The more productive the stock is, the better off they are, so they never fish past the point where the fish's growth rate falls because of low population, even if their costs were zero. But in open access, open access meaning anyone is allowed to fish, and there's no rules regarding how much, or just that those rules are not well enforced, a group will end up fishing till the total revenue equals the total costs. The problem with this is, well, a long time ago, this graph may have looked more like this. The technology was less advanced, making fishing more expensive. Also, the demand for fish was lower. The open access situation didn't optimize rent, but the populations were still high. Today the demand is so high and technology has become so advanced that fishing has become relatively cheap and the open access can lead to not only these lower profits for fishermen but fish populations becoming economically extinct and fishermen becoming completely out of work. Putting effort in past the maximum economic yield doesn't optimize the economic rent. Fishing past the maximum sustainable yield damages the fish stock and doesn't even maximize revenue. Allowing open access is just dangerous and leaves the stock vulnerable to collapse. Unfortunately, this seems to happen a lot, as has been seen in the Grand Banks, the Southern Tuna, New England Ground Fish, Northwest Atlantic Haddock, Atlantic Salmon, New Zealand Orange Ruffy, Chilean Jack Mackerel, Japanese Pilchard, South American Pilchard, and others. Here's a graph for all the fish caught everywhere, excluding farming which seems to have picked up the slack. But those farms are often fed with foodstuff from the land. The wild captures seem to have leveled off on average. Why have overall catches stagnated? It might be partly because of that relationship we talked about in a previous video, where effort is increasing but fish catches are not. Remember, this is the fishermen putting in more effort to find the hiding fish. Their catch per unit effort is decreasing. So maybe the world's catches are a maxi version of this relationship. Or maybe it's from when one species population goes down, the population of their food increases. Like when the catch of Atlantic cod declined, the catches of their prey, snow crab and shrimp increased. It's what they call fishing down the food chain. This phenomenon may seem good for some fishermen, but I think it's better to get those top predators that tend to be more valuable and more tasty. And this isn't really a sign of a healthy ecosystem, but maybe this graph has leveled off from relationships like that. Or maybe the fishermen just keep finding new stocks of fish. But these big graphs can only communicate so much. There is a lot of diversity between fisheries. Some fishing is hunting pelagic fish like tuna that live nearer the surface and swim around a lot. Other fish are demersal like cod and pollock that hang around on the bottom. There's invertebrates like crabs and lobsters. And there's really big things, mammals like whales and dolphins. Some stocks can be fished by one community, and others, like tuna, by many countries. Most fish caught is used for food, but a good amount is used for animal feeds or for fish oils. Anyways, the point is, each fishery is going to have different sources of conflict depending on how they run, and who has vested interests in the way they run. Whenever these people have different or incompatible goals, you get conflict. But in the end, the most successful fisheries will be the ones where all these people are on the same page, working towards the same goals. Let's say our goal is, let's start small, a healthy fish stock, because that is where the value comes from. The more productive the fish are kept, the happier the fishermen, the environmentalists, the government, and everyone else can be. Beyond the open access problem that we looked at in the previous videos, fishing industries have some other problems standing in the way of our goal. First off, it's really difficult to know how many fish there are. Okay, here's how counting the number of trees in a forest works. You find out the size of the forest, you know, after you've decided what counts as a forest and what counts as a tree. I mean, does a sapling count as a whole tree? Then you start counting. You don't count all of them because depending on the size of the forest, that can take a really long time and be really expensive. So you count various sections, ideally random plots throughout. Then you sort of assume the rest of the forest is similar and come up with an estimated number. You don't know what it is for sure, so it'll be some sort of a range. Now imagine you don't know the size of the forest, or how many forests there are, the trees are invisible and under a bunch of water, salt water, which is the worst kind of water, the trees move around, and their population is constantly changing from climate, predator-prey relations, and humans taking large amounts of them out of the water while sometimes trying to hide that they're doing so. And if monitoring is government funded, when money needs to be cut from a government's budget, it's often first from environmental concerns or economic assessments. 